Bobby Wagner hitting the twilight of his career, and he is not with the Seattle Seahawks. He was cut abruptly, abruptly, without warning to him. He found out about it like the rest of us did. They didn't tell him. That's crazy. They leaked it. They leaked it. They didn't tell him. They didn't bother to tell him. Here's Bobby Wagner from yesterday after signing his contract with the L.A. Rams on not communicating his release. The Seahawks not communicating his release to him. Here he is. Personally, I think after, you know, 10 years, I think it's just a simple communication. I don't think it, it had to be that difficult. You know, I, I watched their interview and I, I saw the apology. I'm, I'm grateful. But, you know, when they said it was because I represented myself, I felt like that that part was weak. I don't feel like me representing myself, whether I had an agent or whether I didn't have an agent, I still felt like that was a conversation that they could have had. Um, you know, that's that's kind of where I stand with it. A lot of people think that, you know, it went into my decision um, being able to play the Seahawks. Um, I don't have that much hate in my heart. Um, I think I really wanted to be happy and I wanted to be, you know, close to home and, and, and stay on the West Coast. That was important to me. But playing the Seahawks twice a year was a cherry on top. And, uh, you know, they'll make I'll make sure they see me every time uh, we play them. So they'll know where I'm at and I'll make sure, you know, I, I, I'll tell them it won't be a quiet game for me. He has no hate in his heart. What would he have said if he did have hate in his heart? <laughs> He's ready to go face the Seahawks. And, hey, that adds to the flavor. That adds to the luster. That adds to the allure of this rivalry between the Rams and the Seahawks. Although it may not be much of a rivalry. Of all years in his career to be dumped by the Seahawks, this would be the one because it's not like it's going to be the knockdown drag out we've seen in the past. The Rams are clearly better than the Seahawks at this point, And Bobby Wagner will probably have a couple of potent games against Seattle when the Rams play them this year, Chris. Yeah, no, no doubt. Hey, he's, he can still play. We know that fits with the Rams, what they do, tried, true, present, you know, a veteran football player. They, they, you know, did not have great performance in the second level of their defense last year at the linebacker position. So he's certainly going to improve them that way in that direction. And, you know, as far as like the, the Seahawks stuff, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked to hear that. I really am. I really, I'm just like, no call, no, nothing, not a warning that this is going to happen. You know, I, I understand what, what, yeah, he's representing himself, but how does that really change things? I don't really know. But do you like, not call his agent? I mean, right, you would call his agent, and the agent would call not. the player. Like, what's the difference? Exactly right. What, I don't get what it. Was it, was it. Was it the same mindset as who's going to tell Aaron Donald no? I mean, it's like, who who gets the short straw here to call Bobby Wagner? I'm not call here. I'm hey, 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 Pete, I'm not calling him. You, This is your idea. You're the one. You call him. Well, I know I'm calling. No, you call him. No, no, that's uh, but, but 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 regardless. And and look, let, let's hear a little bit from Bobby Wagner about acting as, own, as his own agent, because we got some things we need to talk about as it relates to players negotiating their own contracts. Here's Wagner okay. talking about being cut by the Seahawks and then going into agent mode and finding his next deal. Obviously, you know, I never thought I was going to leave Seattle. Um, I always wanted to be in Seattle, um, you know, but as soon as they let me go, you know, you had to kind of separate the emotions of a player and an agent. You know, I can be frustrated as a player, but at the end of the day, um, I had a job to do to try to figure out, you know, where my next home was going to be. And so I kind of just switched mindsets. I feel like I do a, a pretty good job of um, kind of being two different people, one as a player, one as an agent. So. Uh, you know, a player kind of took it personally, but the agent just went to work. And so I just, you know, started calling teams and reaching out to teams. I think a lot of teams didn't know that I represented myself. So, um, you know, I got in contact with, with teams and made sure they knew that I was the person they was going to reach out to directly and, you know, just kind of start the process from there. And look, he has done well for himself negotiating his own contracts. Other guys, especially their first time around, have been – not uh, in a great position at the end of the day. Now, here's one of the untold secrets about this. They all have people helping them. They're not doing it themselves. Right. They're not doing it themselves. They have people who are helping them. There are names out there. People in the industry know the names. There are people who are helping the players who are representing themselves. They're not paying them a percentage. I don't know what they're paying. They're paying by the hour or what. They just give them a flat rate. They're not paying a percentage, and that's what a lot of the players who choose to represent themselves are trying to get away from. We've had that conversation recently as it relates to Lamar Jackson because I believe he doesn't want to have to pay the percentage even though 97, 98, 99% of the pie that a good quarterback agent would get him is much larger than the 100% he's going to get 
on his own, especially right now when he has 100% of nothing. But for the most part, teams like it when players represent themselves. I've been saying this for a few years yeah, now. And definitely. this is it's like, oh, you're trying to help the agents. No, I'm trying to help the players. Because I, if you want to represent yourself, that's fine. More power to you. But, but quit trying to get other guys to do the same thing, to validate your decision to represent yourself. Because the teams do this when they get to negotiate with a guy directly. They do this because at some level, there's going to be an imbalance. At some level, there's going to be an opportunity because they do it all the time. They're doing it over and over and over again. They know where all the secrets are. They know where the tricks are. They know how to do anything and everything that isn't obvious on the surface to someone who never does it. Yeah. And if you are a player, you're doing it once or twice during your entire career. If you're the team, you're doing it all the time. And if you're an agent who is skilled and experienced, you're doing it all the time. You need to fight fire with fire and get a fair negotiation here. And it's going to be very difficult for a player to ever get a truly fair negotiation. Ever. Because they rarely do it, and the teams do it all the time. Right. It's like anything else we've talked about. You know, if I don't have time to paint my house, I'm not going to paint my house. I'm going to get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it. There are people out there who are skilled and experienced, but... Some of these guys, and it started with Richard Sherman and Russell Okung. I'm not afraid to say it. I've said it before. It's not enough for them to just say, we're going to do it ourselves. They're on this anti-agent crusade, and I think it's harmful to players. They think they're helping. They're hurting because they're putting ideas in players' heads that they can go do this themselves when the reality is the specialists in the industry, the best ones out there especially, are the ones who should be doing this because the players are going to be in a better position if they entrust their careers to folks who know what they're doing, and that is an honest assessment aimed at helping the players, truly and genuinely helping the players get the most that they can from the teams because the teams would love it if every player represented himself. They would love it if every player was doing the contracts on their own. There'd be a lot more money paying for super yachts if every player represented himself. I guarantee you that. Definitely. It's their playing field. I mean, you, you described it the right way. It's, it's, this is what they do. You know, they got more reps. They got more experience. I mean, it's, it's everything you talk about as an experienced football player, a good football player. Yeah, you're you're on their field now, football player. And, you know, they're better on that field than, you know, you are. It'd be like we talked about, like bringing one of the front office guys down to the football field and be like, all right, now play football against Bobby Wagner. It's It can be uneven. That's for sure. Uh, it's definitely a slippery sl slope. I agree with you 100%. The agent has great value to me. I would never flirt with that or deal with or or want to. I wouldn't want to deal with it one, nor would I think that I know the little nuances that are not in my profession or not my craft to, you know, know all the little tricks of the trade and how to make it work. So um, that's where I, I'm with you. It's dicey. And I don't think players should just be throwing that out there, especially to some of these young guys that are out there. And we've seen again, not going to name names, but we've seen players negotiate their own contracts, and it wasn't well, that great. Did. You're right. You don't need to. Well, I know. Richard Sherman's but first deal with the 49ers was so bad, the union had to intervene and go to the 49ers and say, can we change some of this stuff here? Because you, you really put one over on right, it. Right. Can we change some right. of these things? Because this is really bad. Yes. That happened. That happened. I know. I know it did. And, you know, with, with Wagner, though, uh, I read some of your details yesterday on, on, on pro football talk. It looked like he did a decent job as far as protecting himself. Again, I'm no expert here, but you and I, and you're better than me. I mean, we do this all the time. We look at contracts and at least know some of the nuances that help a football player out. And I will say just from the basic look of it, it does look like he did a decent job of, you know, future roster bonuses and things like that, that protect him a little bit and give him some money, you know, down the road if they cut ties. One, one, one way he did a very good job as it relates to agents is he cooked a lot of fluff into the contract to make it look bigger than it is. So congratulations for that. It's not five <laughs> years, $50 million, yeah. right? And, and if it's one year, and I went into the analysis of the contract when it showed up yesterday, and it's the entire, sometimes I get a breakdown yeah. from somebody that I trust who breaks them down and gives me the, the, here's the payments. Sometimes I have to take the raw contract and look at it and analyze it myself. And what happened yesterday was there's a couple of different 2023 conditional guarantees. One has offset language, one doesn't. And as it turns out, and this was a good move by him, he's got a $3.5 million roster bonus that pays out next year. It's actually vested in March, pays out in April. That doesn't have offset language. So he's getting $10 million from the Rams. Six right. and a half this year, three and a half next year. 
whether he gets anything more beyond this year, well, you know, and it's ten million. It's basically three and a half million is deferred into next year without the offset obligation. The talk around the league was it's six and a half million this year, three and a half million next year with offset. That's where the rumor mill and the grapevine were wrong. There is no offset, so he's getting the ten. And he wanted one year eleven point five. Peter King reported that last week. So he gets one year ten. What happens after this year remains to be seen. The Rams will have an incentive to say, if he's not living up to what they expect, we're going to pull the plug on this or we redo the deal or whatever. He could have gotten more from the Ravens. He could have gotten $18 million fully guaranteed over the first two years. More guarantees at signing. Yeah. But he just he chose not he chose not to go to Baltimore. He wanted to be in L.A., I think, for maybe some family reasons. And those are perfectly legitimate reasons sure. to accept the offer from the Rams. So, yeah, he did well for himself. But just because he's done well for himself yep. doesn't mean that every player should be doing it on their own because most players, the vast majority of players, are far better served having an agent, especially Lamar Jackson, who's too focused on football to even bother to sit down with the Ravens to have the conversation. Well, that, that's, that's a real problem. That, that That's really the issue. And, uh, you know, this time of the year, maybe you get away with it. But, yeah, anytime you're in the – football season or dancing around the football season OTAs training camp in the middle of the football man it's it's you're, you're playing quarterback especially there's no time to think about anything else it's it's you don't want to be dealing with that but even now he won't do it no we, I know we, we reported I, I, over the weekend he's told the Ravens he's not doing anything until after the season I I, I I just I'm blown away by that I just cannot I cannot get over it I really can't it's totally crazy. I, I can't believe we're in here in this position with, with Lamar Jackson. He's, he's risking a lot. We're rooting for him, but, man, it's risky for sure. I, I, I just hope we need to go to break, but I hope that someone has explained it to him and he understands it, and he's still making that decision. As long as it's an informed decision, you got every right to do it. The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness includes the inalienable right to make decisions that may screw your life up. But you have the right to make them. You, 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 that, that's, that's your right. But I just hope he understands. I hope someone has said to him, look, look, you play the position in a very specific way. There's no guarantee when you get to the end of your seventh year and you become an unrestricted free agent, you're going to have anything left physically. You feel great now. And we're not talking about a broken ankle. We're talking about an accumulation of injuries that may yeah. get him to the point where he just can't play like he currently does. And there is a huge pile of money waiting for you right now. Now, do you understand the risks? Yes, I do. Okay, if you do, that's great. I just hope someone has fully explained it to him and he realizes what he is risking by embarking on this because it makes no sense. It's unprecedented because it makes no sense to be taking this specific path when, as we said last week, the truck is there, the back door's open, the money's on the lift gate, it's ready, it's waiting. Go get it, especially since it would help your team create some cap space and some cap certainty. So maybe they could go after a DK Metcalf yeah, if they were inclined that's, to. You know. yep. yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.